Amanda here. Thanks so much for joining me. So today I'm doing some work on my Shabby Rose journal. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing how to um, do the elastics so they don't show on the spine. And the elastics are what we're binding our pages with. I'm also going to share how I map these funky shapes. Okay, how I do it. There might be an easier way of doing it, but I'm going to share how I do it. Um, you know, because we've got this funky shape from the file folder. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to do a little bit of decorating. So let's get cracking. I'm going to, first of all, very quickly show you how we're going to bind our little slim signatures in. So here are my two signatures. So far, I've only got six pages. Just use the beautiful pattern papers. That's it so far. And I'm going to do the Midori style binding. And the joy of that is you can add and remove pages. If I decide I want to change these pages around or I want to add something or I want to take it away, I can because I'm not committed with the sewn method. So I've got eyelets, top and bottom. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, first of all, in the bottom, I'm using a slim rounded elastic that's fabric covered. I think this one's actually either, I think it's two mil this one. Okay, so on your small journal, we don't need big hefty stuff. So down the down the bottom, so in through the inside of the cover and up. And then this one, again, we're going to go in there, up and over. And we're going to do it over the top. Now, you might think, well, will that not buckle? No, it won't, is the answer. <laughs> I won't uh, waffle on as to why you've just got to trust me I've been doing it a long time it won't buckle so then what you do is you bring these two ends together and you tie them in the middle now until your pages are finished and you know how much kind of give that you need in your elastic I suggest that you just tie it in a bow then once your journal's finished you can either tighten it or loosen it undo the bow adjust it and then when you're committed to the tightness that you desire you can tie it in a double knot and pull it really tight it won't come undone okay if you want to add a dab of glue on the knot you can but in my past experience once you've committed and you pull that fairly tight in a double knot it shouldn't come undone okay so that now gives you two sets two sets of strings or two strings not two sets <laughs> and all you do is grab your Look at these beautiful papers. I know I'm biased because I've made them, but they are absolute, absolutely beautiful. Okay. And then that is how we are adding our... It is one of my favourite favorite ways of binding a journal because it's so simple. I do it because anybody can do it. You don't, if you've got bad hands and you can't sew your signatures or you're not good at getting them straight or lined up, this is a great way of doing it. Okay, perfect. Anybody can do it. And that's what we want. We want anybody to be able to make these journals and that's why you make them so simple. But they always have a bit of a wow factor. And the wow factor here is the beautiful papers and especially the embellishments. So I've probably shared before that I've layered the inside pocket with these three lovely tags. You might have thought they were unassuming on their own, but when they're layered up with all three of them inside that pocket on the front cover, it just looks beautiful. You've got a lots going on, lots to catch the eye. You know, this one's a little interactive one with these little tiny elements in. And I do have a tutorial on this. So if you've missed that, go back through my videos and find it. Okay. Um, just go on my channel homepage, click videos and have a look through them. It's a recent one. Okay, right, so let's get some bits and bobs together and we'll do a few pages. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do was requested by one of my um, members and she asked me over on my Facebook group how to map these funky shapes. Okay, because they're not just square. It's not like matting and layering when we do folios that are a certain size. So, first of all, what I need to say is that these are not always, you know, like true like rectangles or, you know, the measurements aren't always exact. The file folders. It's not 12 by 12 cardstock that we've cut down accurately. So, you do need to bear in mind that there can be a little bit of offness in the measurements. Just don't worry about it. 
progress over perfection nothing needs to be perfect okay the other thing was another question that was raised yes when i did my tutorial for the base i glued all of my pockets down okay you want to be matting and layering before you glue these pockets down because we're gluing straight on we've not got a tab if this had a tab that you you know an extra bit that you fold over half an inch extra to give like a kind of like a gusset then you can lay, slide your paper in but when we're gluing straight down just gluing that straight down you can't so you need to do your matting and layering first i didn't cover that on that video um I don't know, I, I want thinking. Right, so this is how I do it, okay? So what I do is, first of all, I'll measure the area that I'm wanting to mat, the full measurement of it. So I'm gonna be matting and layering this. So we'll do the full measurement. We'll, normally I'd cut it off short so I don't waste paper layering all the way in there when it's gonna be covered, but we'll do the whole thing. So this measures top to bottom, it measures nine and a half by two so the first thing i do is grab a piece of paper and i cut it exactly the same size to start with okay so i'm going to cut my smallest first which is two and on file folders always cut to the you know the largest don't measure here measure the full size <laughs> two by nine and a half okay i'll show you the full full process nine and a half if your paper's directional you need to bear that in mind okay that's why i typically use non-directional ones like spotty dotties or the pinstripe okay so now you've got a piece of paper that's exactly the same height and width as there okay but we need that shape that's not that's not right hold on a minute that's not right <laughs> it's not nine and a half I, I, have i been drinking it's eight and a half beg your pardon so even though i do it every day I, you know my brain is sometimes just don't work right so eight and a half okay so then what I do is I will cut off whatever increment I want. So if I was matting and layering a folio or a mini album, I'd cut this quarter of an inch shorter there and quarter of an inch shorter there, which would then give me an eighth of an inch on all four sides shorter. Okay, because this is a folio and I don't want to show a right lot of that yellow, I'm going to do it ever so slightly less than that. I can do it by eye on my trimmer. If you don't mind the yellow, then you want to, and I will do it. Mine's slightly less. Okay. So you want to cut an eighth of an inch off of one side. Where's my eighth? Hold on a minute there. Eighth of an inch off the right side. Turn it around an eighth of an inch off the left side. Then you want to cut a quarter of an inch off the bottom. Is that the bottom? Yeah, that's the bottom. Off the bottom. Okay. As I say, I do mine slightly less so that I've got a smaller increment. But this is easier if you've never done it before. And then as you go, you just find your own way. And you, if you understand your trimmer, that's better. So now you can see that my piece, I'm stuck my piece now is if you sit it in the middle there okay i've got an eighth of an inch top and bottom i've got an eighth of an inch there and i've got an eighth of an inch there right so now how do we cut the funky shape so what you want to do is grab yourself a pencil okay and you get your piece of paper and if you can see now that it's smaller okay don't go down to the gusset there, lift it up, okay, and, hold on a minute, is that right? Lift it all the way up, yeah, that's right, and lift it all the way up to the top, and then we're going to line it up with flush with the bottom edge, 
and flush with the top as if we've not cut it smaller okay as if we've not cut it smaller so i'm lining it up i'm holding it up so you might think well that's not going to be right trust me so line it up with the top and line it up with the side make sure it's straight and flush okay okay and then to make sure it's lined up doesn't matter if it's not perfect okay because nothing needs to be perfect okay so i'm lining it up there and i'm lining it up there now i'm going to draw that shape okay okay so again i've lined this piece of paper up although it's smaller okay because we've cut it smaller can you see I've lined it up as if it's the same size. So I'm lining it up with the top and with the top edge. So you've got a gap there where we've cut away. Then you get your scissors and you cut that shape out. Okay. Just take your time. Again, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. This is the only way to cut awkward shape, to, to mat awkward shapes. I'll show you another way. Or I'll explain another way. If you're a little bit more experienced, you'll know this. Okay. All right. So now, when I add it to here, we've got that shape. Can you see? And we've got that increment. And you would glue that on and that is going to be perfect. Okay. Don't worry if your cutting there is not perfect. That's why, you know, Tim Holtz invented Distress Ink. Bit of Distress Ink on there, bit of Distress Ink on your cardstock, you're not going to notice if you've cut it, you know, not perfect. Obviously, rub your pencil marks away, and that is how you do it. The other way that you can do it as well is by literally laying your paper over the top, okay? And I literally will lay it over the top, with the gap at the bottom, I'll do it to the increment that I want there. So I've got a gap there and then I will mark it with pencil. Okay. And then I will trim it. And that's how I sometimes get it to the right size as well. If you've not got things that, are, you know, that are not perfectly square, like 12 by 12 cardstock and you're using something a bit funky, like a file folder. So that's another way you can do it is by literally marking it and doing it by eye, trimming off small amounts at a time. But that's how we do it. That's how we map those funky shapes. Okay. So obviously I've done mine a little bit um, less than an eighth of an inch there, an eighth of an inch there and a quarter of an inch there. I've probably done sixteenth of an inch each side and an eighth of an inch there so that I've got a slightly smaller increment because I didn't want as much yellow showing. But that's how you do it. Right. Let's get cracking with some decorating ideas. The first thing you want to do is find a page you want to decorate. I don't tend to decorate these kind of pages. These are writing journals. I just want to write on there. So I don't heavily decorate. Okay, and I will leave lots and lots of blank pages for writing. But if I come across and I think, right, that's decorative, that's decorative, that's pretty decorative. Oh, right, I've got a lot of plain here. I'm going to do something on this page. Okay, and... What you can do, because we've done the Midori style, is take your page out and decorate it outside the book. Okay, you absolutely can do that. Now, I've provided in this collection quite a few lovely embellishments. So we're going to do a really simple, really simple um, decorative page. Just using what we've got. Okay. We're not necessarily creating anything groundbreaking. We're just making those pages a little bit pretty so i'm just adding a bit of extra ink because when you cut around white cardstock this is white it leaves a white edge which i don't like if it, you don't have to right so i designed these so that they're larger than the page so you can fold them under about half an inch okay now if you're not good at folding things straight by eye you use a scoreboard or a um, you know, a ruler and a blunt object. So I'm going to actually fold these. Am I going to fold them under half an inch? Uh, I'm going to do them three eighths of an inch. No, let me think. One, two, three. Yeah. 
I'm going to do with mine just under half an inch each side. Okay. Uh, my, my brain's gone. I can't uh, work out my measurements today. That's quite the uh, three eighths. Okay. Sometimes my brain just uh, it just goes to mush, and it only happens when I I'm really intelligent person until I switch this camera on, and then all of a sudden I go stupid. Right, so I've done three eighths of an inch. If you do half an inch, it won't be much smaller. Then you want to get your glue of choice. I'm at the moment using the Nuvo glue, which so far I'm happy with, but I've yet to test it on black cardstock to see if it dries shiny. Because I don't like that on black cardstock. Okay, so I'm going to put plenty of glue on because you do still need to use plenty. This is a very, very tiny um, tip and so I wasn't putting enough glue on. Then we're just going to attach this across the middle. Okay, I'm going to centralise it. I'm not bothered if it's not even top and bottom. I'm just going to centralise it. Okay. Mm. I can't wipe this glue away if I've used too much as easy as I can with Colol. I have noticed that. It's a little bit stickier. Let me see if I can find my glue eraser before that dries. I've just splodged. No, I can't find it. Don't know what I've done with it. Oh, we'll have to make do. Never mind. There we go. All right, and then... All you need to do is fill it. So we've got these lovely journal cards. Okay, let's have a look which one I like. Quite like that one. So I'm going to just ink it. You can distress the edges. You can sew around them. Will it fit? Yeah. But these are in the in the kit. So that all you've got to do is print, cut, and use. All the work's done for you. We don't have to make every last little thing from scratch. There's no shame in you know, just using them as they are. Or you can, you know, jazz them up a little bit. You maybe add a butterfly to the top as like a pull tab. In fact, that looks quite nice. I might do that. I'm just gluing at the bottom of the wings there. So this was just kicking about on my desk. These are in the, in the collection. And I'll just add that to the top as like a pull tab. And that will slide in there. Okay, now what you can do if you don't want things sliding out at the bottom is use one of the little circles or you could use one of the other embellishments like this, although that's exactly the same, so you don't want to be using that. Let's have a look. I've got one already inked up here. So I'll just put a little a little doofer at the bottom, but you could use anything. Let's have a look which way up our that way so I'll just glue it about halfway maybe okay about halfway and centralize it with this add it on and then you can always add extra stuff to that like you could put a little word across that's quite nice isn't it I did make some little buttons you could add some little buttons I don't think I want them on um you can add quite like i've got these little tickets you can add the little tickets and a word like that I quite like that actually so we're going to do that and that is that's a page done so simple so so simple it really doesn't have to you don't have to you know rack your brains and spend five hours decorating a page okay and that can peek off there like that And then this word here, you could add some cheesecloth under or some lace under. I don't like using things that I think other people might not have. That's the method in my madness. And then I'll layer that. So another thing that I've noticed with the Nouveau glue, if anybody's waiting for me to like say what I think of it, you don't get much wiggle time. It dries, it's a good thing, it dries super fast, but you don't get a lot of wiggle room. I, I would like to move that ticket down just a little bit so I can see the numbers, but it's dried already, so I can't, okay? 
right so we've got that and that little circle there will stop it coming out so then obviously you know you can put other things in we've made the little um tags that i've shared with you you know you could put those in you could put what you want so let's make some tiny little envelopes and then we'll do another page decoration right. just so what does that belly band measure let me see because i'm going to load up this belly band it's five right so five plus three plus five and five is ten plus one inch to overlap it is eleven so i'm going to cut my paper to eleven if you're a letter user it should just about fit okay eleven right so let me just think i'll just use this scoreboard so i've cut that to eleven so on the bottom, oh, it's double-sided, this one. On the bottom, I'm going to score at half an inch. Okay. And then at one side, I'm going to score at... What did I say that was? So I want it to five. So I'm going to score at... Um, three and a half. Hold on. Let me just think. Two and a half. Right, so I want to score at three. Three. There. And then three plus five is five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> eight. Which then leaves me with that's not scored deep enough. Eight. Which then leaves me with three. Three. And five. Right. That's not right. That's not right. No, it's fine. The level up. That's fine, the level up. Um, and then I'm going to do the top. I'm going to score at, uh, what do I want? Two. Right, fold. Fold, now those will overlap. And that should measure five. I've done it right. We've cut to 11, we've scored at 3, we've scored at 8. And we've scored at 2 at the top. Okay. Then all we need to do is, on the bottom score line there, you're going to cut straight up the score line to the first line. And then this one you're going to notch in. Okay. And then this one you're going to cut away. And then this one, we're going to notch towards that score line and then cut all of that away. Okay, then at the top here, we are going to cut straight down the score line to start with, straight down that score line to start with. Uh, and then cut these pieces away or you can just glue them flat to give extra stability but it's not necessary cut it away we don't need it cut that away cut that away if you've got a corner rounder round these top flaps if you haven't if you haven't got a corner rounder, what you could do is just cut it at a slight angle, okay? So that you're cutting like a tiny sliver of a triangle off. Yeah? Um, I shall do half an inch. I'm going to do half an inch. That way. 
that way, Amanda. So I've rounded there. Some days my hands don't work. You'll just have to bear with me. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fold that in. And we're going to fold that in, glue it on top. I could probably have gotten away with a smaller amount of paper there. Could probably have gotten away with 10 and a half instead of 11. But never mind. Right. And then you just make sure that it all folds up. And it does. And it's almost like a sweetie bag, isn't it? It's cute. So I'm going to glue here. And then glue the bottom flap up. Okay. And now you've got your, your little envelope. You can put a policy style closure on there if you want. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to leave it open. And I'm going to put an embellishment on it. So you could have it that way and put your embellishment on there. I'm actually going to have it that way and put my embellishment on here. And I'm going to use one of these. Shall I? Or shall I have this one? That one's really pretty. I really like that. But what I'm going to do to make that pop just a little bit is I'm going to do one of these. Will that size do? No. With a slightly larger one. Which is where? Here we go. So I'm going to do a. Will that size do? That's not really going to show either. What size is that? One and a half. One and a half. Where's my one and three quarters? There we go. I'm going to use my one and three quarter circle punch. If you don't have circle punches, you might have dies. If you don't have dies, draw around something, use a compass, cut squares. There's always a different way of doing things. Inking all of that. And then I can stick that on there. It's got a base to stick to. Okay. Stick that on there. Don't be tempted to use Velcro uh, for closures for things like this because your Velcro will hold too, will grab too much, and then you'll end up with wear and tear on this. I'm not a massive fan of Velcro as fastenings on paper craft projects. It's too basically it's too strong for paper, even for most card. It's too strong and your project will end up buckling or ripping. Don't, don't, don't bother. Okay. So now I'm just going to glue the top half of this. A little circle. And that will, can go there nicely. Okay. And you've got yourself a cute handmade little envelope. And that would slip in there as well. Hopefully it will fit. And I made it too big. If I've made it too big, we'll just pretend it fits. It does fit. Okay, it fits perfect. So there you've got a really loaded pocket. Okay. Really loaded. Or you could put this over the top of a page and have that lovely embellishment showing. Okay, like that. Add a little paper clip. And put a, I don't know, could you put a journaling card on there? Yeah, you could put a little journaling card on there. That would look nice. Okay. And then, in fact, let's do that. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, brain works faster than my mouth. Although, mostly, it's my mouth that works faster than my brain. So, we're going to go to this plain one here. No, that's not plain. It's got decorative on that side. I don't want it on that one. Let's find one that's plain on both sides. No. No. I love this one. This one's all right. So what I can do is I can have that 
hanging i don't want the butterfly because i've already got a butterfly there can have that hanging over the top like that then i can add a paper clip so let me just find one this one will do for now you can decorate the paper clip after clip that on there like that okay and then you've got a lovely tuck spot there as well to stick something and then on here we could some dotty paper let me cut that down a bit oh shall i use it no I'll use the dot mm, yeah we we'll use the dotter cut it down to what shall we say uh one and a quarter cutting it down to one and a quarter You can either just put it straight across the middle like that. That's even enough. You can have it top to bottom like so. Which I think that's what I'm going to do actually. Yeah. What did this measure again? Five and a half. Cut it to five and a half. going to ink it a bit more ink on there these things don't have to be complicated even though I make them look complicated and when I'm on a day where my brain I have these days where my brain don't work And then I'm just going to get off. If I have that centralised and I have that about there. It just breaks up those stripes a little bit. And just gives this a little bit of something as a background. Yeah? You might think it doesn't make any difference. But to my eye, that just looks better. And what I can do with this, if I'm clever as well. Let me think. I'm going to put a little thumb notch just at the side here. Because it's never enough. We're never done in Amanda Land. We've always got to add something. We've always got to add something or do something extra. And I'm going to glue it on three sides. Okay. So top. Side. And bottom put that there okay let me just move my paper clip put that there kind of central and i've now got a decorated envelope with a tuck spot there it's an envelope and i've also just created another tuck here and in this little tuck i could put some of these shabby photos so if you're one of my Kofi members, I added these to the group the other day over on Kofi on the member posts. And these go nicely with this journal. So I can add a couple of these. Um, I could add one up there if I wanted or add one up there like that. Okay, and I can add a small one peeking out there. And if I had any words left, which you do, because I think I've used them all, I might stick a word on the bottom. So there you go, I think that's enough to, hold on. Right, I'm gonna just use this label and then. I wonder if I'll edit this video. Cause it's a train wreck. And then we'll just add our little, another one of these little tickets there, look, just to finish that off. And I think that's really rather lovely. I uh, just made that up on the, off the top of my head. So there you go. We've now got a couple of decorated pages. Uh, one using just the digitals and one using something that we've completely made from scratch with the digitals. 
I've also shown you how to add your signatures and I've also shown you how to mat the tabs. I'll see you next time. I'll try to be more prepared and a little bit more organised, but I can't promise it because this is a mandaland. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.